Hello, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is not OG Birador. I'm not a rapper. My name is Trevor Taras, and I'm a filmmaker. And today, I'm going to talk a little about my film, Respeto, and how I found my voice as a filmmaker. But before that, can we have a show of hands? Who here are hip-hop fans? Rhyme yun, huh? Yeah, nice, nice. How about films? And if, oh, very good, very good. Yeah, hip-hop and films. Two of the things I loved most when I was growing up. You know, um, I, I, I didn't expect that these two things combined together will lead me to my biggest creative project to date, which is Respeto. Um, I would like to share a quote from, from one of my favorite authors. Um, well, actually, she's not an author. She's an actress, and you, I'm sure you know her. Her name is Evangeline Neely, and um, she's best known for her role as the Wasp in the Atman series. The Wasp. Okay. Well, she, and she said this about creativity. She said that um, a creative project is a moving target. You'll never end up where you started. Okay, so here's where I started. This is a picture of my father. He was an electrical engineer who moonlighted as a videographer for weddings, baptismals, and funerals. He was the one who introduced me to the video camera. And he also taught me the film process called stop motion. And, you know, there was something about what me and my dad were doing that, you know, that, that, that really uh, sparked something inside of me. And as early as six years old, I knew that I wanted to become a filmmaker. Um, after graduating in college, I was very fortunate to land a job as an art director in a clothing company. Um, I told myself that I would stay there for just a, a, few, a, a few years, maybe, you know, until I found something that I really liked, which is, of course, a job in filmmaking. And I didn't waste my time there. While I was working in the clothing company as an art director, I also attended workshops at the Mobile Fund Film Institute. The Mobile Fund Film Institute um, is, um, is an institute uh, uh, located very near, uh, no, very near Savior. Now, I think this is the last year that um, I'll see this building because they're turning it into uh, ano na, parang a, a compound of townhouses. Yeah, but most filmmakers, especially during the 80s and the 90s, would come from this um, film institute. Um, so, you know, uh, after two years of working as an art director, I felt that I wasn't happy with what I was doing. I wasn't earning enough, and I felt that I may not become a filmmaker because I didn't really know anyone in the industry. I was just on the outside looking in. And I told myself that, you know, maybe the only way that I would pursue my dreams if, if, if I, myself, finance the projects that I am planning to do, which is, of course, a lot of money. And I didn't have money because I just started, uh, you know, being a professional. So when a friend of mine approached me and asked me if I'm open-minded, I said yes. So at 23 years old, I was an art director by day, selling health and beauty products at night. And on weekends, I was a door-to-door -door salesman, also selling the same health and beauty products to random strangers. And I also had to learn how to do makeup and food spot treatments that I would do to these random strangers that would, of course, never buy the products that I were selling. It was, it was a weird and uh, terrible, I guess, uh, part of my career. But these were the times that I really learned a lot in life. It taught me that, you know, if you really want something, you should never give up. And I learned two important things. The first was this. You're probably going to do some things you don't want to do in order to eventually pursue what you really want to do. Of course, there'll be setbacks and inconsistencies, and that's okay. If you get tired, just rest, but don't quit. The second thing 
that I learned is, you know, to know what is it, you know, what is that something you don't want to do? We always get the question of what do you want to do when you grow up? What do you want to, want to, what do you want to become when you grow up? But nobody ever asks, is there anything you don't want to be when you grow up? I learned very quickly that I was a terrible salesman. It wasn't for me. But I was very sure that I wanted to become a filmmaker. So I continued to look for opportunities and platforms to showcase what I can do. One day at work in the clothing company, not the, the health and beauty products, um, my boss asked me to help out the band. So we sponsored their photo shoot, and um, my task was to art direct the album cover shoot. So the band was, it was year 2004, and the band was out border. And no, I didn't become one of the band members and singers, um, but you know, they became good friends. So they liked my job, and one of them you know, asked me if I, if I knew someone who could help them with the music videos. This was before YouTube, no? before the YouTube era, before the social media era. So he asked me, and to be honest, I was you know, tempted to volunteer myself. But of course, I was very shy to, 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 uh, to, to, to volunteer myself and do their video. But fortunately, you know, fortunately, they asked me again, and I told them that I attended you know, several workshops you know, in Mobile Fund, and my dad, uh, Moonlight, as a videographer, so we had, the, we had an editing setup at home. They agreed to let me direct their music videos. And I guess the rest was history. In 2004, I resigned in the clothing company, and I stopped selling health and beauty products. Um, and you know, uh, since then, I've done more than 300 music videos for almost everyone in the industry. Um, after music videos, I also did advertising work, concerts, events, I did everything. And, you know, the first years of being a director was really fun. You know, I learned a lot, you know, I met a lot of people, it was really great. But I knew something was missing. All of the stuff that I did were commissioned work. I never did anything for me. So, you know, I felt that I didn't have a voice as an artist. You know, making music videos are fun, interpreting music and turning, into, turning them into poetic images. You know, that's, that's what I love to do. Turning storyboards into TVCs, you know, uh, conceptualizing concerts for these big name artists. You know, it's, you know I, I love doing this, but you know, I was looking for something that, something that I would do with love. So, you know, I was determined to find that voice. In 2010, I attended an event in my alma mater, which is USD. I was part of the school paper, the Varsitarian. And we had an event for the Jubilee celebration of the university. In, 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 in the event, there was a portion that, you know, uh, we had three of our greatest poets who were also a part of the school paper be before. Uh, of course, I'm sure you know some of these names, Lim Nadera, Mike Rosa, and Teo Antonio. And, you know, we, we had them perform Balagtasan. Of course, we all know what Balagtasan is, di ba? Alam naman natin kung ano Balagtasan elementary pa lang. Of course, for those of, for those of you who don't know what Balagtasan is, it's a Filipino form of debate done in verse. So when I was watching these poets, of course, the stars struck ako. You know? it, it would be nice if someone, hindi ko, pala, hindi ko pa alam na ako, if someone would make a film about balagtasan and hip-hop. So during the time, I, I also tried to think of stories, but, um, you know, walang dumating sa akin story. In 2013, two years after that event, I was watching a concert of Glock 9. Of course, we all know Glock 9. Uh, if you don't know him, um, he's this uh, uh, rap, uh, Pinoy rap artist who's best known for his socially relevant songs. So I was watching a uh, show of Glock 9. Um, it was, you know, the crowd was wild, everybody was enjoying the concert. But then I noticed someone, an old man, was seated in front of the stage. And 
I know I've seen this man before. He looked very familiar, and I, and, and I realized that this guy is our national artist, Benvenido Lumbera. So when I had a chance to ask Glock9 why a national artist, our national artist for literature, uh, was watching his concert, he told me that he and the veteran poet had developed a friendship. In fact, um, Mr. Bien Lumbera has been going to a lot of his shows and vice versa. And this was a eureka moment for me. You know, because they became the inspiration for the main characters of my film. Finally, I already know what the, my first film would be. It's going to be a film about martial law, but, you know, a, a film about martial law that, you know, the young audience will be able to relate to. And to do that, I plan to combine uh, rap and poetry. So in 2015, I finally did it. I resigned from work in the TV network, and you know, I started writing the script with a co-writer. We submitted it to the Cinemalaya uh, film competition, and fortunately, we got in. We were selected as one of the finalists in the 2017, 2017 Cinemalaya film competition. But to be honest, you know, um, the script that we submitted you know, wasn't really very good. You know, of course, it was the first draft. But if you read the first draft, it really sounded like Karate Kid. You know? It sounded like Karate Kid. It's a very inspirational movie about this aspiring writer, this old martial law poet. But everything changed in 2016. In 2016, we elected a new president who, from the moment he sat in office, declared a war on drugs that resulted in the deaths of thousands of suspected drug dealers and users across the country. And, you know, 2016 was, well, you know, every day, this was the news. And I felt that my film can't be just about hip-hop anymore. You know, I felt that as an artist, maybe this was a platform that I have been waiting for. I felt that I needed to say something. So with the help of my team, we revised the structure, rewrote the story, and redeveloped the characters. And Respeto became a movie about EJK. But there's one more challenge. We couldn't find funding for the film. Nobody would want to attach themselves because of the team. Some people wanted to be part of the film. They were willing to give us millions of pesos, but I had to change the story. Of course, I didn't want to do that. My producers told me that, you know, maybe I should postpone this film and, until I find the right financiers. But I knew if I was going to make this film, I needed to do it at that time. The window of, of opportunity was very small, and I didn't want it to, to pass me by. So I had to trust my gut. So, what I, so this is what I did. I went to my wife. I talked to my wife and asked her if she would allow me to use our savings for the film. Fortunately, she allowed me, and we just left, you know, just enough for my family to, to survive till Christmas of that year. So, you know, we started filming. We filmed Respeto during the height of the drug war. And I cannot believe that we would experience it right in front of our eyes. This was taken during the first filming day. And as we were filming this particular scene, uh, it, it was a scene when the character of Abra Hendrix uh, was just walking home from, uh, from, from a rap battle. So while we were filming this, three undercover policemen entered our set. Again, these are real policemen, not actors. They were pursuing a suspected drug dealer. And this person would have been shot right in front of us, in front of the cameras, in front of the, in front of the crew, in front of our actors. 
He would have been shot there if he did not conceal himself behind an elderly woman. No, it was quite an eye-opener considering it was the first day of filming. But community members told us that they're used to these kinds of situations. Every day, especially in that community, people are being arrested every day. And every day, people are being gunned down and left to die in the streets. Before Respeto came up, I was very nervous. I was very nervous during the premiere because I didn't know how the audience will react to this, to this film. It was 2017, and there, there, there were no EJK themed movies at that time. And it was very far from where we started. And Cinemala, I didn't know about the changes that I've made with the script. But fortunately, when we, when we premiered, we got a standing ovation, probably the longest in Cinemalaya. And, you know, I guess the rest was history. And Respeto became one of the first films to truly tackle the Philippine war on drugs. But, of course, you know, when the film came out, the challenges, you know, didn't stop. Actually, even became harder. Now, filmmakers like me, filmmakers who make films about these kinds of themes, human rights, EJK, or martial law, are being red tagged. We're being accused of being terrorists, rebels, communists, lahat na. You know? And, you know, these people from the higher power are accusing us of using our film screenings as recruiting grounds for insurgents. But I'm not surprised. Of course, these are not true. Our film stayed in the theaters for almost a month. Normally, if your film is uh, produced independently, you know, you're lucky to get three days or a week. But we were so lucky that we were able to stay for almost a month. And, you know, um, Respeto is still being shown in micro cinemas and film festivals all over the world. So after a year of touring film festivals, I'm proud to say that Respeto has gained the attention of the international film community. In fact, we received more than 30 awards already, and you know, eight of those came from the international uh, uh, award-giving bodies. Now, so just to sum up what I've talked about today, um, a creative project is a moving target. You'll never end up where you started. You'll probably do a few things you don't want to do in pursuit of what you love. If you get tired, rest, but don't quit. I guess I could say that while I was making a film about a rapper who was trying to find his voice, I also found my voice as a filmmaker. And I intend to use that voice to speak out, to question, and most importantly, to make noise. Magingay tayong lahat. Thank you very much. Thank you.